I am making some great improvements in this garden and I'm spending absolutely nothing to do it. Come on, come check it out. Well, it's entirely the wrong time of year to be moving this Hackland Cloa, but uh, it needs to get moved because I'm planning on doing a little bit of work over there. So it will end up leaving that area, whether I dig it out and try to move it now or I just leave it. So might as well give it a shot and try to move it over to this part of the garden, which is a place where I've been wanting to add more of this. This is Hackland Cloa All Gold. And this is such a great plant, you guys. I feel like I've talked about Hacklencloa about a million times, um, but it is one of my favorite plants because it's so useful. It's a grass for shade. Now, if you haven't had success with Hacklencloa, here's what you need to know about it. It wants, think about woodland soil, and that's what it wants. It wants kind of humus rich, moisture rich soil, but also doesn't want to sit in like clay. So, you know, it wants, it's another one of those plants, and we say this all the time, it wants good drainage, moist soil, which sounds like a Cinderella type of soil. Um, but uh, all of the, all of the all gold Hacklenclaw that I have in my yard came from about 10 two inch plugs that I bought when I was a member of an online plant co-op, which helped me start this garden, honestly. They're probably 12 years old now, and over the years I have moved them around and divided them, and I've got two big groupings of them, um, and I'm kind of working on a third over here. Uh, but I love the way they look over here in the woods, and I have them growing with stilbees, which I think is a really primo combination, but I need more of them over here. So since I'm doing some work over there by that path, which is putting in um, sort of a proper path over there, as long as I work up the energy to move stone this year. Um, I thought, well, we might as well move these anyways, because like I said, they're gonna get damaged in the process anyways. But I only think I need to move this clump. The rest of them I can push out of the way. But this is just one example of what I've been doing in this garden all weekend, and that is making more plants for free. And I am all about it. So I just want to show you a few of the changes I've been making in the garden that have cost me nothing. Now this is a fairly big clump. So if you look closely, you might be able to see these little shoots that come up, these little rhizomes. That's how this spreads. But it's not like, don't be afraid of rhizomes because in this case, uh, it's not a problem. This will never get out of control for you at all. This is probably big enough that I could break this up into three or maybe four plants, but I'm actually gonna only do two because this is a pretty rugged area over here. This is, um, this area doesn't get a lot of coddling. And uh, there's a few things over here, including things that I want, like the Carex Blue Flocka, and things that I don't want, like Creeping Jenny and Creeping Charlie and uh, Lilies of the Valley that can be quite aggressive over here. So I'm gonna keep these as bigger clumps so that I don't have to worry about this actually getting like eaten up by something else. And I'm actually gonna put one of these guys right here in the middle of these. So I spent a good amount of time in the garden yesterday, um, just kind of walking around, 
pulling up weeds where I needed to, obviously, but then seeing some areas that looked overcrowded and then moving those around. And honestly, you guys, you wouldn't believe how many plants you have in your garden that you can use somewhere else. So this garden that we're in right now, the driveway garden, uh, it was planted in 2020. So what was it's like its third full season here this year. And some stuff, you know, I planted pretty close. So some stuff is in need of some adjustment. And that's exactly what I did. So the first thing you can see here is this big swath of geranium macrorhizum. Are you guys sick of me talking about this plant yet? Probably, but here we go again. Uh, and you can all, again, all planted from plugs. You can see how much it's filled in. But would you believe that enormous bundles of this plant were just taken out? So we took out one right on the edge over here and another on this side of the path because they were both encroaching on the path quite a bit. And I also took some out right along the edge here and you can't even tell. Actually, there's probably more of this that should come out because it is still fairly crowded in the middle, although geranium macrorhizum doesn't care. So that was the first place where I got plants from. And the thing with geranium macrorhizum is that you can break it down into individual pieces. So one clump probably yields, can, can yield 25 plants. So when you dig out Hacklenchloa macra, you'll get a big clump, but this is what you can do with it. You divide it down into sections like this, and you can see that you know it spreads by these little roots, and these run sort of horizontal. And you can see there's a new little shoot coming here, and that's how it grows. So I divide it, and it just breaks easily into these pieces. And then when I plant it, I just plant these you know, under the ground, but laying sideways because that's the way it was. I mean, you can also stick them a hole this way. It's, it's such an adaptable plant and won't care. But anyway, also this one I missed yesterday, forgot to get in the ground. It's still totally fine. You don't even need to rush when you plant these. I also took out some astilbes. So you can actually see where I took those out. You can see this hole right here and right there. That was two, both of which I divided and put um, kind of over here because I'm, I'm starting to stretch this garden out this way a little bit. So there's, here's one right here, here's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, and move those around. And then the final plant that I took out of here is Carex Flocka Blue Zinger. I feel the need to always provide a disclaimer when I talk about Carex Flocka Blue Zinger. Some places have actually stopped selling it because it can be so aggressive. Here in my climate, when grown in the shade, it is, you can see it fills in well. I do not consider it to be aggressive. It doesn't, um, you know, you want it up against plants of equal vigor, but I don't consider it to be a problem here. But do your research on that before you add that plant. That said, I think it's a great plant. You know, what I'd say here about the Carex is that first of all, it's an amazing ground cover. So you can just imagine how many weeds would be in here if it weren't for that. Second of all, I still feel like it respects its boundaries. We've got some Simisifuga growing in here. Um, again, the Astilbe and the Hacklenchloa, all of which are you know, of equal vigor and are doing just fine. Here it is with this beautiful um, crested surf fern. And it's just kind of moving its way around the back, all of which I'm happy with. So those are all the plants that I took out. Let me just quickly show you where they all went to. So this is a spot you don't see very often in my garden. This is the back side of the driveway garden with all the hackle and chloa macra and the pagoda dogwoods in it. There's this little berm back here and we built this berm up because we needed trees that were a little taller but we didn't want them to get too tall. So we settled on these dwarf Alberta spruces that will remain short enough to, you probably can't see them up there, to not interfere, let's see if we can get you there, to not interfere with these power lines up here. But we raised them up on this little berm. Now this berm is totally a cheater berm. This berm has soil in the middle where the trees are planted, but the rest of it was all built with mulch, which means there is not really, other than the mulch breaking down and creating soil, there's not a lot happening here. So this is a bit of an experiment. So here's where a lot of that Hecklenchloa macra landed, is right in here. This is the driveway, the neighbor garden that we did uh, last year. Um, to combine this little piece of property that lands between my neighbors and us uh, between our driveway so that it's something pretty to look at instead of a whole bunch of weeds. And this is the main part of it, but this is what I added in yesterday. And then the Cleric's Flock of Blue Zinger is down here along the front. 
Uh, it works better on my side because we're a little less sunny over here, but I did sprinkle a few of them through their side of things too. And you know, projects like this where you're beautifying an area that isn't really that important in your garden, I mean, no one's going to look at that and say, oh, wow, look at how beautiful that is on the side of their driveway. It's not that important. So I don't want to spend a lot of money on gardens like that. I like having them, but I wouldn't go out and spend hundreds of dollars to buy a bunch of plants for that area. So this kind of thing where you can divide what you have and put in really tough plants that you know will do well there is perfect. So here's another spot. This is part of the shade garden that never got finished, never really got a chance to start. It wasn't supposed to be yet. We're still working on this slowly, but this is where some of that geranium macrorhiza ended up too. Um, we'll make a nice little ground cover in here and it makes a great placeholder. So even if I decide I want to change it, which I don't think I would, um, it's a nice placeholder. Speaking of new gardens, I'll give you an idea of where we are here. We're on the north side of the house. This is the garden that I created that's sort of an extension of the garden that I worked on with Roy Diblick. And as we work this way, we're getting farther into the woods. And of course, at some point there needs to be a stopping point, but I don't want it to be a firm stopping point. So um, this Hacklenchloa macro will be the perfect thing to sort of ease off here a little bit and keep this ground covered. I mean, honestly, it works just as well as a reason, as a way to avoid weeds as it does for beauty. So anyways, we filled in this, some of this has already been here. That's new from that bit we just, um, that we just divided. Here's some more that we just uh, put in. Well, it looks like absolutely nothing right now, but here's another plant that we moved. And this is an example of cutting things back. And it's a really good thing to do with a lot of perennials. So this was, was, is Nepeta subsessilis prelude blue. Beautiful plant, but I had three of them planted here and I didn't realize um, how big they would get. So I left one here and then we moved the other two. Here's one right here and one behind it, which will fill in this area really well. This path is another great example of a way I'm going to be improving my garden without spending a penny. So first of all, this path is made of arborist chips left here when uh, we've had trees taken down over the years. We have them leave us a big pile of them and we just bring them over here and pile them up. Now these have been down for like I said, this is their third season here, and they're really starting to break down, and these arborist chips break down into really nice soil. So it's time to top these up because you can see we're getting a few bare spots in the path here, but here's the, be the best part of this. So you can kind of, I mean, look at this, it's like almost soil here. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna rake this up, not carefully, but I will break this up and I'm gonna put this in the bed. So this is actually now like amazing mulch. So it's, uh, it was pretty good mulch before to be honest, but it's broken down, it's gonna be so good. And particularly here in these parts of my garden that are quite sandy, I'm really finding that I need to be a little bit better about adding organic matter in uh, because the soil is lacking a little bit. So um, that's what we're gonna do. I'm just going to roughly rake up with a pitchfork what we have here move that into beds, top dress everything as you would with any mulch, and then we're gonna put new chips down to uh, make a new path. And in three years or so, I'll be able to repeat the same thing. So I'm making some great improvements to my garden for free by doing this. First of all, we're clearing out areas that are overcrowded, uh, and those areas are gonna look better. We're taking those plants and fixing other beds, improving other areas, expanding gardens that exist, creating new gardens, playing around with plants like I'm doing on the back side of the little berm over there. Um, because honestly, if that doesn't work, I have no idea if it will. If it doesn't work, no big deal. What have I lost? Absolutely nothing except for like a little bit of time and that's about it. I have to say for as much as I enjoy planting new gardens and playing around with new plants and getting new plants, I think I get more satisfaction out of stretching what I have to make it go farther because uh, anybody can go buy a new plant and plunk it in, right? I think this is, is um, the gardening part of gardening. This is the part where you make the decisions about what needs to change and what needs to get moved around and where you want to put it and what you want to do with it. And that's fun. It's a challenge and it's, a, it's fun and it's very freeing. 
um, to just walk around your garden and do this, which is exactly what I did yesterday. Walk around with my shovel, dig stuff up, move it somewhere else, water it in, be done with it. And at the end of the day, make big changes in your garden for nothing. All right, I hope you guys are having a great day in your garden. We'll see you soon.